Yeah. The air is moving there. Okay. She's learned how to use it finally after so long time. Now, talk about woman suffrage. Oh, when you yeah. lived through I that. Remember, I remember woman suffrage. And uh, there's some old man lived down the street, and uh, he didn't know what woman suffrage meant. He saw a lot in the paper about it, and, and the pictures uh, of them, women walking down the street and demonstrating. And uh, this old gentleman said, well, I tell you, I don't think women suffer any more now than they used to. <laughs> he didn't know what he was talking about. No, he didn't know. And I, don't, I didn't know hardly what she's talking about to start with. I well, that's the name they gave that, you know, uh, fighting for right to vote. Oh, right to vote. Yeah, that's what they, and they called it women's suffrage. Well, I didn't think that was, you didn't suffer much. Well, well anyway, that was the name they gave that. <laughs> you didn't that the papers have been full of it this week. You didn't suffer because you didn't get the vote. That wasn't yeah. <laughs> suffering. And I the, think they did think it was. But this is the anniversary. What is it? The 50th It was in 1920 70th. when the 19th believe. Amendment. 19th Amendment was women got the right to vote. 75, I believe. Mark. And uh, there's a lot of sense to, to what they did. Uh, well, there was women then that had finished college and they didn't have the right to vote and the black people that just so they was a man they got to vote but they didn't know as much what they're voting for as, a, as the educated women in this country and uh, it, it was yeah. a good amendment when was the first time you voted do you remember well, I, the first time I voted was when Roosevelt run and I haven't missed a time since well, didn't that Susan B. Anthony have a lot to do with that? Yes, she did. Do you remember her? Well, not, no, not particular. I've read a lot about, you know, that she was one of the leaders in that. No, I never did know much about her. I never did. I yeah. Did they do any demonstrations around here on that? Do you, that you no, remember? No, well, most that I saw was on the front page of the paper. They did most of it in New York in the big places. And it was before television, so you didn't see oh, any yeah, of it. Oh, yeah, what you saw in the paper. Oh, well, and you saw the films this week of all of that that oh, went yes, on. Oh, yes, I so. did. I did, but the, I remember the paper. Now, the pictures in the paper were just like what's been on television this week. I remember the pictures. They had the women with great big hats on. And they most of them wore just suits and long dresses to their ankles. That's, that's terrible. <laughs> I remember World War One. Sounds great. They told all kinds of tales about Kaiser Bill in Germany. They even told that he cut out a uh, boy's eyes and sent them back to their mother. That's what you call it, propaganda, back in 19 and 14 and 15, 16. Well, they a lot of Proper, proper, yeah, oh yeah, that's what that was, propaganda. It was turning people against uh, the Kaiser. And uh, I remember some of the songs that was real popular then. Over there. I was just a kid, but we used to sing it. Tipperary. Yeah. Over there, over there, do beware. We're coming over and we won't Come back till it's over, over there. That was one of the ones. And the, the kids used to sing that. Kaiser Bill went up the hill to get a peep at France. Kaiser Bill come down the hill with a bullet in his pants. He <laughs> <laughs> must have turned around. <laughs> it's a long way to temporary. It's a long ways to go. And I, I forgot the rest of it, but he used to know it. And, uh, and when the boys would leave, we lived in a small community, they'd slip off from their mothers, you know, everybody would cry and carry on so. And uh, the boys would come home and they would pack up and they wouldn't let their mother know when they was leaving. Yes. Well, what do you remember about World War II and what yes, were you doing uh, then? The second well, one. I was working then, and uh, it, it really didn't impress me as much as um, World War One. 
We didn't get any news then except the grit paper, and that come once a week. <laughs> That's right. Got a little more news in World War II. My too, brother, didn't? my oldest brother, he was just a kid with World War One, and he got the agency for the grit paper. And the doctor come down the street, and he was had his papers on there. And the doctor said, "What kind of paper is that?" And he said, "A newspaper." <laughs> That's all he knew. It was a newspaper. It was the grit. Just a newspaper. Right. Lord. Well, did all of your brothers, were? are they all in the war? No, my brothers missed the war, all, all the wars. They were too young for World War One, and they were too old for World War II. They come in there between. I might have, if I'd been a boy, been old enough to, I probably would have been in World War too. Okay, tell me about all of your family. Who was the oldest, and if you remember their birthdays, and yeah. when they died, and who they married, and how many children they had. Oh. Who was the oldest of well, your I'll family? I'll tell you about my mom and dad first. Okay. Don't take me long to tell what I know, and it'll be right though. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad and mother was married in mm. 19 and Ninety nine. Eighteen ninety nine. Yeah, eighteen and ninety nine. In September the fifth. And uh, my oldest sister, oldest child was born in nineteen hundred. And the next one was Her born name was Grace Claudine Moore. Okay. And the next oldest was Matthias Hollis Moore. And he was born 1901. And the next one was Norman Earl Moore. And he was born 1903, January 11. I didn't put the dates of the others. Any, anyway, the, Grace was born, the first one was born 1900. Next one born 1901. Norman was born January 1990, uh, 19 and, uh, and she, 19, 1903, and the next one was Dewey Henry Moore, and he was born May the 26th, 1904, and Vincent Wingfield Moore, was born February the 26th, 1906. And the greatest one of all, Ooh. and the youngest, Ooh. and the largest, <laughs> was born in, and weighed 11 and a half pounds, mm. and was born in 1908, November the 2nd. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're doing, and, uh, you're doing good. Well, and um, and so uh, the first death in our family was my dad, which was, his name was William Thomas Moore, and uh, and he married Daisy Boyd from Oriskany, Virginia. My dad was from Pocahontas County, West Virginia. Dad's people. And, um, Did he have any brothers and sisters? Do you remember yes, them? My daddy's, and I don't, I can't give you the dates of their birth, all of them. And uh, my daddy was born February the 27th, um, 18 and 78. And my mother was born July the 30th. 31st, 1880, and they was married September the 5th, 1899. I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. 1899, I had a mistake on that at first. And how many brothers did your dad have? Do you remember that? My daddy had done. 
mm-hmm. that was pure blood. The oldest one Good. was Moffitt, Charles Moffitt Moore. And um, he settled in Pennsylvania and raised his family up there. And, um, and he had a sister, Effie Moore, I don't know her middle name, Effie Moore, and she married my mother's brother, Charles Edward Boyd. No, I got that wrong, Linda. Charles Moffat Moore. No, he married them. Um, Ada, P A double R. Ada Parr. Parr. Hmm. Yeah. And then um, uh, Hannah Moore was his sister. And she married my mother's brother, Max Boyd. And um, he had another brother, uh, John uh, John Boyd, and he married Nettie. You know, I don't forget who she married. See, my mind's slipping too, Linda. Nettie. Oh, Nettie Twig is who John Boyd married. And um, mm, and think, then he had a yeah. younger brother, Richard think. Moore, and he married um, Lara Mull, M-U-L-L. And they lived in Pennsylvania. All of the Moores lived up there except my, my dad. And he married, I told you who he married, Dave's boy. The three boys married Moors of the same family. Did he have any sisters? Yeah, he had. The Effie was the oldest sister. And then a, a Hannah Moore, and she married my mother's brother, Max Boyd. Hmm. If it wasn't for the Moors and the Boyds, they wouldn't have none of them got married. There <laughs> <laughs> wasn't no Boyds, there wasn't no, been no Moors. That's right. <laughs> It's a three sets of double first cousins. It's the same blood as brother and sisters. Yeah. And Hannah Boyd had six children. Daisy Boyd Moore had six children. And Effie Boyd Moore had um, eight. And all those kids are the same kin as brothers and sisters. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, how about your mother's people? Your mother's father well, came from Germany. My mother's father, he come over here from Germany. What was his name? His name was Henry Simon Boit, B O I T. And his mother was living, and he had some sisters living in Munich, Germany. And he corresponded with them all of his married life. And he married Elizabeth Fisher from Johns Creek over in Craig County. And he met her when he was a Yankee soldier. He come over here and, of course, landed up north in, in New York. And he didn't know what the war was about. He was a young man. And... Um, he saw an ad in the paper, somebody wanted a substitute to go in the Union Army. And he answered the ad and got $1,300 for it. That looked pretty good to him over here in a new country and was a young fella and no people. And this man that he substituted for was from Connecticut. And so he was among the Yankee soldiers that come through the South. And he met my grandmother over at Newcastle when they was coming through Craig County. And they struck up a friendship, a Yankee and a Southern mm. woman. And, and after the war, he went back north and he wrote to Grandma, this um, Elizabeth, Sarah Elizabeth Fisher is who he married from Craig County. And, um, and he used to write her, uh, a lot of love letters 
And one of the love letters, it's been handed down, that he wrote, said he was real poetic, and he wrote that uh, there was one thing they could look at at the same time every night, and that was the moon. <laughs> I know what she's going to say. Okay. He, yeah. had, he had two sisters that stayed in Munich, Germany, but he didn't have any other brothers or sisters or close relatives that were here in the United States. Is he that didn't right? have none of his people. He never saw any of his people, but he corresponded as long as he lived here. And his mother sent him gifts and sent him money. And, and, uh, and the, I have the last letter that I received from over there, which was 1921. And that was uh, a sister, and her name was Yetha Boyd. What was his other sister's name? Do you I know? don't know, but I have a lot of pictures of, that they had sent him over the years. I still have those with the German inscriptions and the writing on the back and everything. Well, how many children did he and his wife he have? He had 12. Your mother was one of them. My mother was one of 12 children. Were they boys or girls? Do you remember any of them? Well, I can name the most of them. The oldest one was Charles Edward Boyd. He's the one that married my dad's sister, Effie Moore. And there was uh, John, uh, John, I don't know what his, his middle name was. But he married. He was married three times to the same woman. Now this is getting real sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. But that's There's nothing the, like the truth. That's right. Well, he married this real good-looking woman, and I still have a real nice picture of her. She wore nose glasses, which was very stylish in that age, and um, she always wore a lot of jewelry, and we thought he had a real good job, which was good at that age. He was an engineer on the CNO Railroad. And uh, he met this lady in Ronsford, West Virginia, and he married her. And they uh, lived together several years, and they divorced. And in the meantime, while they were divorced, he married another woman, Sarah somebody. Anyway, she was a very pretty woman, and he lived with her, and then he went back and married Laura again, the first one, and he married the same woman twice, and uh, <laughs> I don't know whether I want to tell all this on tape or not. I'll walk it out. You know, I don't care. It's getting sleazy. <laughs> oh, come on. No, I'll be happy. Hey, you're going to miss the most important part. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, he he never he and Laura never got along, but she was real good looking, and she was redheaded. Mm. And um, anyway, I've lost. You ever have any children with her? Didn't have any children. And then uh, he died suddenly, and it was always questionable what happened to him. And some of my mother's brothers went to their brother's funeral out in Ronsford, West Virginia. And she lived in an apartment that was owned by this banker. And um, they would, uh, during the time of the funeral, some of my mother's brothers went out there to, and they said she acted like she was scared to death. And Uncle Ed or some of them questioned some of the people there at the bank. And they were suspicious that she might have given him a pill or something to put him to sleep that day. He was a healthy, strong man, and he was um, he, he died suddenly that nobody understood why. Anyway, that was questionable. And she lived, this Laura lived to be way up in her 90s, and we often wondered if she ever told him. There was a lot of suspicious things around his death. Hmm. Anyway, now that's getting down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, you don't have to it listen to this if you don't want to. Excuse me. Uh, go ahead. You just, I'm, I'm going to read. All right, you were talking about your... You want to put that fan on? You think it's not in here? No, you go ahead. 
Amen. about his brothers and sisters. Oh, well, that's about the Uncle You said John. there were 12 of them. Yeah, there's 12 of them. <clears throat> and, um, and Uncle Max, uh, that was one of the boys. His name was Maximilian, and there's a historical person down in Mexico. And my grandpa boy must have knew his history or something. Anyway, they named him Maximilian. And I've heard, read a lot about the Mexican history and that Maximilian was, was connected with that. Somebody that knows history real well will know. And um, he married my, my daddy's sister, Hannah Moore. And they had five children. I thought it was six, but they had some children dead. But they had five children. and. All of them died with heart trouble except one. Heart trouble definitely is in our family. And um, they settled in all city Pennsylvania and raised their children up there. And then um, uh, she had a sister, Sue Boyd. These are uh, the, the Boyd family. Sue and she married Sam Oliver and they had six children and um, one of them is still living and um, and uh, then there was um, uh, Bob Boyd and he married Cini Morgan C-E-N-I-E Cini -E. Morgan from Roanoke and they had two children, a boy and a girl. The boy's name was Melvin Boyd. And he had a son named Glenn. And then he had a, had a, a sister, Ruby. And she married a Harry Scott. And they settled in California. And then there was Grover Boyd, and he married Ethel Fisher. Uh, might have been distantly related to my grandmother, Fisher Boyd. And um, they didn't they didn't have any children. And then there was Daisy, uh, Daisy Virginia Boyd, to my mother. And she married William Thomas Moore. Was she the youngest? My dad's brother. No, got a lot to go. They had 12. Mm, okay. And then she had another sister, a girl, um, and her name was Molly Dove. And she married James W. Fisher. <coughs> and they had two, two sons. They lost a little boy, and then they raised two sons. And their two sons was Holly Fisher and Henry Fisher. And then they had um, um, uh, Irie Boyd, who married a Moore, but she wasn't related to the, the family of Moores. I've been talking about my dad's people. But she married a Moore from Eagle Rock, Virginia. And uh, he married um, uh, Cariula Moore from Eagle Rock. And uh, then there was the youngest one, no word, Frank Word. He married a uh, Bertha Twig. She was a, a um, she was a sister to my dad brother's wife, Nettie Twig. <coughs> that was still the two families connecting. And um, she died early and he married again and had a son by his second marriage. That was Frank Word. Boyd. Boyd. Okay. And then the youngest one was Alma Louise Boyd and she married uh, Emmett Marion Myers a brother to my husband. Oh my. And that twisted up. 
But no kin. Must have been a small community. Well, it was. Oh, but risky. Well, you know, so that's the only people that they knew or had contact yeah. with. Well, uh, I, and um, that was odd. I married my mother's sister's husband's brother. She married the oldest one in the family, and I married the youngest, and that made the difference in ages. And um, so, and the Myerses, I knew the Myerses, although I didn't meet my husband until way back, way back in the 30s. Uh, see, they was connected with the Boyds because their oldest son had married my mama's sister. And I had known the older ones when I was a child. But, um, and there was six boys and a girl in that in the marriage family. And uh, I lived with and little Josephine. She was over at her brother's, over at my grandma's house. Some of their first children were born there. It's an odd situation. Didn't any of us get to be president, but we're still working on it. There you go. That's <laughs> a it. Democrat, I'm you. You quit. A, a, a Democrat, no doubt. Well, not always, my dear. Uh, the day I was born, my daddy went to vote, and believe it or not, he's voting Republican. And uh, you know, I tell you what changed everybody to Republican back in them days. A lot of the Southern Democrats was because um, Grover Cleveland was in there, a Democrat, and he like starved everybody deaths right after the Civil War, and people down here was eating Pope Greens and everything they could get, you know. And uh, that's where fried green tomatoes come in. They, they couldn't wait till they got ripe and they fried them green. <laughs> 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 and that's the reason they scraped around something to eat and they discovered Pope Greens. But my dad voted Republican, and he never could get along with his son about on their politics. And uh, Papa had raised his, they had was raised right after the war, my dad's family. And, and my granddaddy had gone out and worked all day for a piece of meat. That's the way the Southerners were. And then, the, and Glover Cleveland was a good president. He was a Democrat, but he came in there right after the Civil War when this country was tore up down here and having it hard, no schools or nothing. And uh, everybody got turned against the Democrat Party back then. And um, so um, my dad, he, he, and he could never get along with his, with my grandpa who lived with us, Grandpa Moore lived with us all of my life until we moved to Salem. And uh, we moved here in 1919 and the house was small and he had five teenagers and all of them in school. And my Grandpa left here that fall and he didn't live to get back. He was planning to come back in the spring. Is that this house next door that yeah. you all moved into? And, yeah. And when we moved here, Linda, uh, everybody thought we was a bunch of gypsies. We'd never seen, my mother never seen the place. He'd come over here and bought it. And, and every old broken down shack we come to, Mama says, I know that's it. <laughs> <laughs> said, I bet that's it. <laughs> and I was 11 years old and my brother was a little bit older. And, and they, we rode, they called it Jitney then instead of a taxi. And we rode over here to the big city. And, and my dad bought this little house next door. And he worked as a plaster all his life? Well, he had worked as a miner until we come here. He was about 40 years old, and he didn't have a trade or nothing. And um, he just and he worked on a parrot's farm over there where the Veterans Hospital is now. That used to be a big farm over there. What did he do? Just farm? He hell? worked on a farm and did work. Well, how did he get his trade? How did he start? Well, I tell you though, he he worked over there, and then there was a glass factory here in Salem, and he fired the boilers over at the glass plant. And he was just scrapping around and it worked at the tannery and fired the boilers over there. My mama said, he always got a job poking them out. <laughs> anyway, he got into the plaster and he learned to plaster his trade. 
and uh, he was real good at it, and he he took government contracts and everything done real well. Not that my dad didn't have a good education, as I said. He came along right after the Civil War, and there wasn't any schools here in the South. Really, we was in the, and there was a, a young teacher where he boarded one time when he was young and taught him to figure and write, and he took government contracts on that place and stuff down here at Norfolk and Portsmouth and did pretty good, you know, for, but he uh, did that after he was 40 years old. Mm. And uh, anyway, is that interesting? Mm -hmm. Well, sure. I'm glad because I ain't going to be able to tell it no more. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you never know. Y'all listen to that now. You well,